everyone. So, so this will serve as your pre-recorded video of or pre-recorded lesson for the last topic or last coverage for zoology. I make pre-recorded video for you to understand it more since branches of zoology uh, are, uh, there are so many, to be exact, there are so many branches of zoology. So that's why I make a pre-recorded video for you to, uh, to, to watch it again and again if you did not, um, you, if you did not or hindi nyo naintindihan yung lesson. Okay, without further ado, of course, we've already done knowing the character characteristics of life, um, levels of organization, and of course, some important names pertaining to zoology. So this time, we, are now, we will continue our discussion for the branches of zoology. So as we all know, branches, uh, zoology itself is the study of animals. Of course, there's a lot of species, different species, uh, or different organism here. So that's why we should focus on what are those organisms in particular uh, branches of zoology. Okay, so now without further ado, let's start our discussion. So now the very, very first branches of zoology is anthrozoology. It is actually the study of interaction between humans and other animals. When we say humans and other animals, meaning to say when the humans interacted to animals, it is called as anthrozoology. What are those subdisciplines that pertaining to these branches? We have anthropology, veterinary, medicine, um, and ethnology and zoology itself so again when we say anthrozoology it is a study of interaction between humans and other animals next branches so for the next branches it is a branch it is arachnology it is pronounced as arachnology because this branches deals with the study of spiders related and related species known as arachnids so such as scorpions or harvestmen so these are uh, particularly those organisms or those animals that is related to spiders so what are those animals that is related to spider of course we have scorpions not only scorpions but we, ha we also have harvestmen so when we say it is species that related to spider that branches is arachnology okay next then the next branches of zoology is archaeozoology or archaeozoology so this um, branches of zoology are focus on the study of dead animals so that's why it's called funal remains so or the skeleton or the bones of the 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 animals that being preserved that is the uh, that is the focus of these branches um it, it of course it in, it includes their bones shells and other body parts aside from it is mentioned to be arche archaeo zo zoology it is also known as zooarchaeology okay when we say archaeozoology, it is focused on the dead animals, meaning to say those funeral remains. And what are those? It includes bones. Okay, those bones that being preserved in in the museum is one of a uh, one of the example of the branch archaeozoology. Okay, so next we have bionics so another branches of zoology is pertaining to bionics why because this branches is the study of mechanical system that function like living organism or it actually been part of a living organism one good example is those um persons has disabilities like for example naputo yung kamay naputo yung paa those um steel that being attached to their hands or their legs is called bionics and that is includes in branches of zoology always remember when we say bionics it is particularly on the system mechanical system that functions like living organism or bionics is already part of living organism or already part with a certain organism okay so that is bionics next of course, if there is a bionics, there is also called cytology. When we say cytology, it is particularly a branch of zoology that deals with the study of marine mammals. And what are those? These are actually includes whales, dolphins, and porpoise. 
And uh, and actually, other than that, other than the example, when a person is actually studies pertaining on the whales, meaning to say, uh, he or she called as cytology. So that person is particularly on the study of whales, dolphins, or perhaps it it is the study of marine mammals. So again, the pro the the branches that deals with the study of marine mammals is zetology, cytology, and that includes whales, dolphins, and four points okay so now let's proceed to another branches for another branches it is very very known in your field which is midwifery why because i know that you are particularly on the growth and development and when we say growth and development that is particularly um included in embryology why because embryology is the branch of zoology that studies the pre prenatal development of gametes when we say gametes it is actually also known as uh, sex cells and as we all know there are two types of sex cells from the parent cells we have the sperm cells and the egg cells so by that by the combination of the both parent cells um fertilization occurs and by fertilization offspring will be developed so that is embryology okay proceed so now for number seven, we have entomology. So entomology is the study of insects. So there are a lot of division of entomology. The first division of entomology, because as we all know, there are a lot of insects around us. So that is why, that is the reason, there are division of entomology. And one of the division is coleopterology. Coleopterology is basically a sub-branch of it. Uh, entomology that concerns with the study of beetles. So, the picture below are example of coleopterology. So, other than coleopterology, we also have dipterology. When we say dipterology, it is another sub-discipline or sub-branches of entomology that studies of all types of flies, mosquitoes, um, Okay, so aside from mosquitoes, we also have flies. So again, those um, particularly or focus on the study with all types of flies, that is called dipterology. And dipterology is one of the division of or sub-discipline or sub-branches of entomology. So other than that, we also have hemip. Hemipterology. Hemipterology is the subdivision of entomology that studies through bags or hemiptera. So if I will be asking you, it is a subdivision of entomology that focuses on the bags, meaning to say that is hemipterology. And as we all know, scientifically, when we say bags, it is called as hemiptera. Okay? So now, let's proceed to another a division of entomology. We have isopterology. Isopterology is the study of termites. Okay? Anai, to be exact. Next, we have lipid, uh, lipidopterology. It is a branch of entomology or sub-branch of entomology that covers the study of butterflies and moths. Okay? So, if it focuses on the butterflies and moths, Moths. So, meaning to say that is a sub branch of entomology that is called lepidopterology. Okay? I want you to familiarize the spelling because that is very, very important. Okay? Next. Aside from that, we also have melitology. When we say melitology, it is the study of bees. It is also known as apiology. So, all, uh, all bee. Uh, all that is actually um, um, produce honey, to be exact, is a type of melitology. And that is the study of bees. Okay? Next, we have mere mycology. Mere mycology is the subdiscipline of entomology which focuses on the study of ants. Okay? So, if it is focuses on the study of ants, meaning to say that is mere mycology. Okay? And next, if it is focused on how the branch or the subdiscipline handles the study of grasshoppers and crickets, so that is called as orthopterology. So as we all know now, as we observe now that I've been discussing, it has 
a lot of division pertaining to et uh, entomology. So that's why it's very important. That's why I make a video representation for you to know the correct um, spelling and the correct division of each branches of zoology. So again, if it is focused on handling the study of grasshopper and crickets, that is called orthopterology. Okay, next. Next, we have tercopterology. Tercopterology is another sub-branch of ethnomology that focus on the study of caddis flies. Okay? So, below the pictures of caddis flies. If you did not see physically the caddis flies, these are the caddis flies below. Yung mga pictures. So, that is tercopterology. Tricop or tricopterology. So please observe the different spelling of each branches or division of it. Next, next we have vespology. Vespology is a subdiscipline of entomology which specializes the study of wasp. Okay, wasps, wasp, wasps is actually the pictures below. So if you did not particularly seen it physically. Those picture is an example of a wasp. Okay? It is actually or basically different from a bee. Okay? So that is Vespology. So that is the division of entomology. Okay? What are those we have? Of course, to start with Chilopterology. Next, Dipterology. Hemipterology. Isopterology. Lepidopterology. Terology, Melitology, Myrmycology, Orthopterology, Trichopterology, Vespology, and or lastly, we have Vespology. So that was the division of entomology. So I want you to observe the spelling and of course familiarize those division and those function of the division. Okay? Next, we have another branch of zoology that is pertaining on or deals with animals' behavior under their natural habitats and stu uh, studying their behavior as an adapted traits and evolution. That is called as ethology. Okay? When we say ethology, it is a branch of zoology that deals with animal behavior. When we say animal behavior, it is accordance or it is an accordance to their natural habitats. So these are the behavior that particularly can be seen on the habitat or the places or area uh, which the species will be living in. Okay? So that is ethology. Okay, one good example of ethology are polar bear. Of course, polar bear... Um, um, shows animal behavior. Meaning to say, polar bear can be live in a certain habitat. In a certain habitat, okay? So that is ethology. So saan ba nakatira ang polar bear? Di ba sa malalamig na lugar only? So that explains ethology. Okay? Next. Next we have helminthology. Helminthology, it's actually study of parasitic worms or uh, we called it in a scientifically explanation or scientifically terms, we call it as helminths. And it is actually uh, deals with the taxonomy of helminths and the effect on the helminths to their host. Okay? So the pictures below are the examples of helminthology, parasitic worms. Okay? Next. Next, we have herpetology. Herpetology is the study of reptiles and amphibians. Of course, um, entomology, not only entomology has its own division, but also herpetology. Herpetology, the one division of herpetology are batracology. Batracology is a branch of herpetology concerned with the study of amphibians alone. Okay? So, what are those examples of amphibians? So, as we all know, the example of amphibians are we have frogs, a salamander, Todd itself. Todd is actually one of the, exa uh, one of the species of a frog. Newt, um, Caecilian, and yes, so that is the example of amphibian alone. So, 
One good example is a frog and that is actually specific in my pictures. So that is one division of her pathology and that is called as batrachology. Okay, next, we have opiolo opiology or it is also called as ophidiology. When we say opiology or of Ophidiology is a subdivision of herpetology which, which deals with the study of amphibians or snakes. So all of the species pertaining to snakes are called or one of the division of herpetology and that is called ophiology or ophidiology. Cobras. Um, um, what else? Um... Phytons, yeah, so that was the examples of snakes or breed of snakes. We have a, a ring, uh, we have ring neck snake, oligodon rostrails, saba killback snake, a type of snake. So that was the examples of ophiology. So all species or all different species that is pertaining to snake is part of orpheo or of the logy. Okay? So next. Next, we have another branches of zoology, and that is called histology. As we all know, when we say histology, it is particularly focused on the cells and tissue of animals, not only the animals, but also the plants. So when we say microscopic anatomy, meaning to say the both terminology cannot be seen in our naked eye. So these are uh, this particularly cells and tissues. We can all we can only see it if we use instrument or laboratory instrument. And what that uh, what is that laboratory instrument? We have microscope. Yeah, and so that's why it's called microscopic anatomy. That is one of the division of anatomy. Okay, so that's it. Next, okay, one good examples of histology and it are those types of tissues. As we all know, we have epithelial tissue, cover, surface, and uh, lines, the internal organs. We have connective tissue, of course, it is focused on the support and protection of your body. We have muscles, it is focused on the movement of your body or muscles tissue and of course nerve we also know we also know that nerve sense and receive information or sensory information about stimuli so that is a good example of histology okay next next another branches of zoology are each thiology okay each thiology is a branch of zoology that covers the study of fish also known as fish science so all of the species pertaining to fish is called each thiology okay next we have malacology so what are those uh, aside um, before we will go to uh, to another branches of zoology of course we all know that there are a lot of types of fish so i will be mentioning you a i think um six type of fish um we have gobby fish anabas eel Catfish. I know you are very known with catfish. Skatefish, snapper, or even grouper are, is a type of fish. So next we have malacology. Malacology is the study of mollusca, such as snails, slugs, octopus, clams, and all animals that live in water with shells. So meaning to say all animals that with shells live in water is called or is involved or uh, include in malacology why because those uh, those organism that has shell that live in water are called mollusca okay so why there why there is an octopus here as we all know that live in water with shell and octopus as we all know there is no um shell why because um in the Anatom or in anatomy, uh, an anatomical speaking, or in an, uh, in the parts of octopus, there is a soft part. And as we all know, when you, we call it a soft part, it is particularly belong on mollusk. And when we say mollusk, it is, or in other words, it's called mollusca. So that's why octopus is belong to malacology. 
Okay. So next, next is mammal mammalogy. Okay, or from the root word itself, mammals. It is a eventually the study of mammals. Not only the study of mammals, but by its name, but also with their characteristics. It is actually referred as mastology, theology, or terology. So that are that is the example, or that are. Uh, that, er, that is the definition of mammalogy. Okay, what are those examples of mammalogy or mammals? Of course, we have horse, giraffe, fox, bear, bat, wolf, elephant, cheetah, cougar, red fox, dog, zebra, goat, pig, or even cat is an example of mammals. Okay, when I say that it is a study, the it is a study of mammals and their characteristic. It is called as mammalogy. Next, we have morphology. So, morphology is a branch of zoology dealing with the study of the form and structure of organism and their specific structural feature. So, in human anatomy and physiology, morphology is actually belong. Why? Because in human anatomy and physiology, where we are particularly been knowing the parts or the structure of the human body and we also been uh, knowing the function of the parts of our human body so that, that's why morphology are belong on studying human anatomy and physiology okay next if you have uh, any questions and clarifications you can now you can actually ask it on gc or even on monday if we will uh, meet in our schedule next we have nematology when we say nematology it is actually a subdiscipline of zoology that studies round worms or in scientific terms it calls nematodes so as as you can see the pictures below is from the captured of microscopy or microscope and that is a good example of a round Worms. So, if you view around worms in micros microscope, that one is you will be seeing. Ito yung makikita ninyo. That picture is below. Okay? So, now, next. So, another branches of zoology, we have ornithology. Ornithology, very, very simple. It deals with the study of birds. Okay? When we say study of birds, it's all um, the, the characteristics of or even all the species of birds. What are those? We have parrot, penguin, flamingo, ostrich, vulture, dove, owl, turkey, or owl, turkey, rooster is actually an example or good example of ornithology. Next, we have paleozoology. Paleozoology is actually a branch of zoology that deals with the study of fossils, animals, to identify multicellular animals. As we all know, when we say multicellular, it is particularly on the organism that basically has two or more cells. So that is called multicellular organism. So multicellular animals from geological perspective to establish prehistoric environments and their ecosystem so meaning to say these are also preserved okay preserve one like for example the bones or uh, uh, like for example what i mentioned a while ago the branch of zoology that particularly on the dead animals so it is actually connected or somewhat the same okay so now let's proceed let's proceed to another we have pathology Pathology is the study of bodily fluids in laboratory such as blood, urine, or tissue to diagnose a disease. Pathology. When we say pathology or pathological, it is pertaining on the disease of living organism. So, what particular disease? It is actually been diagnosed from your blood, urine, or tissues. So, not only in animals, but also in plant. Okay? Always remember that one. Next, we have Primatology. Primatology is the study of living and extinct primates. When we say primates, in in actually daily um, communication, um, primates are those monkeys, apes, and 
prosimians. So one good example is the picture that I've already attached in the PowerPoint. Okay? So that is the branches, another branches of zoology. Next, we have protozoology. Protozoology is a branch of zoology that deals with the study of protozoa, which are unicellular organism. Okay? Kanina, we've mentioned the multicellular organism. When we say unicellular, these are the organisms that produce single cell. And what are those organisms that produce single cell? We have protozoa, proteas, amoeba, and bacteria. Okay? All of the organisms that I've been mentioned is cannot be seen in our naked head. We can only see it if we use microscope. Okay? So that is protozoology. Next, we have taxonomy. Taxonomy actually is the study that defines groups of biological organis organism on the basis of shared characteristics and giving names to those groups. When we say taxonomy, it is basically the classification or organization of a certain species. Kaya nga tinawag siyang taxonomy. Why? It is pertaining on the shared characteristics or traits of each species or animals. So that is taxonomy. Next, we have zoogeography. So zoogeography is or zoogeography is the study of scientific um, scientific study of ge geographical distribution of animal species, both historic and con contemporary in the world. Meaning to say, this is actually a distribution pertaining on the different species. It can be historic or contemporary, okay, in the whole world. That's why it is a combination of zoology and ge geography. Why? We are talking about distribution and anong ano ang dinidistribute, of course, the animals. And that's why it is a combination of zoo, which deals with animals, and distribution, which deals with geography. So that is another branches of zoology. So again, if you have inquiries or questions, we can actually meet on Monday, aside from our activity, because this will be our last coverage for preliminary examination. Next, we have zoography. Zoography is the study of animals and their habitats, also known as descriptive zoology. So meaning to say, it is the study of animals that living in their specific place or area, or it is called as habitats. Okay? Next, we have zoometry. Zoometry is a subdivision of zoology that deals with the measurement. We're talking about meters. We're talking about length. We're talking about size of the animal parts. That's why it's a combination of geometry and zoo. Can say why? Because we are pertaining to measurement, length or size of a certain animal parts, and we're talking about animal parts. And as we all know, zoology is a study of animal. So that's why it is a combination of zoometry. Okay? Next, we have human anatomy. For human anatomy, this is a study of the structure of humans and their various parts. Whereas zootonomy specifically refers to animal anatomy. So another branches of zoology is human anatomy. So as we all know, as I've already mentioned a while ago, when we say human anatomy, it is particularly on the parts of the body of the human. But if we're talking about animal anatomy, that is called as zootonomy. So always remember that, that one that is very different if we mention human anatomy. Kasi if human anatomy, it is particularly on the parts of human body. But if we're talking about zootomy or zootomy, it is refers to animal anatomy. Okay? Okay? So that is the end of the branches of zoology. Any questions? Of course, if you have questions, clarifications, you can raise it on Monday. And on Monday, we will be having activity. So you will be familiarizing all of the, the, all of the branches and division of 
zoology because we will be ha we will be having oral recitation individually okay so that's why sorry so that's why i have a pre-recorded video for you to see it clearly with the spelling of each term because that is very very important for you to know what are those spelling particularly on the branches of zoology so that is the end of the coverage for preliminary examination and on monday tuesday we will be having set a oral recitation and set b oral recitation okay so thank you so much if you did not um, understand the lesson you can repeat it again and again then afterwards on monday if there is some inquiries before we start the oral we you can raise it so thank you so much have a nice day everyone